Hello, and welcome to Recap It. During World War II, the British armed forces enlist a compact team of elite soldiers for a covert operation to assault German troops operating from behind the front lines. It's very good. Let the movie begin. The movie opens with a revelation that it is inspired by true stories from the confidential archives of British Prime Minister Winston Churchill. For those unfamiliar, Winston Churchill served as the Prime Minister of Britain during World War II and played a pivotal role in leading Britain and its allies to victory against Nazi Germany. The scene then shifts to the Atlantic Ocean in 1942, where a vessel is adrift with two occupants, Gus March Phillips and his companion Anders Lassen, who are undercover British operatives. A squad of Nazi soldiers intercepts them, climbs aboard, and demands their identities and purpose. Gus and Lassen cunningly convince them that they are merely Swedish fishermen who have lost their way. The Nazi commander orders a thorough search of the boat. During the search, two soldiers stumble upon Henry, another covert British agent. Without hesitation, Henry eliminates the soldiers. At this juncture, Lassen embarks on a furious assault, eliminating the Nazi soldiers with his knife, while Gus draws his firearm and assists in neutralizing the remaining soldiers. Subsequently, Freddy, another disguised British agent and a member of Gus's squad, emerges from the ocean, informing Gus that he has successfully planted explosives beneath the primary German vessel, a significantly large ship from which the soldiers had disembarked. Shortly thereafter, hey! the German ship detonates, obliterating everyone aboard. Let's rewind a bit to dive into the origins of Captain Gus's squad and their purpose. Winston Churchill, accompanied by Agent M and his aide, Agent Ian Fleming, gathered around. Churchill is currently presenting a video detailing the formidable German submarines blocking the American supply routes to Britain, thwarting the delivery of essential provisions and armaments. He emphasizes to M and Ian the critical necessity of neutralizing these submarines to ensure the success of American aid, and by extension, to secure victory in the war. M and Ian report their findings to Churchill. The submarines are being resupplied via a Spanish island, Fernando Po. Nazi ships loaded with supplies and fuel periodically set out to replenish the submarines. Churchill posits that to disrupt the Nazi submarines effectively, it's imperative to sever their supply lines and obliterate the supply vessels stationed at Fernando Po. This action would pave the way for re-establishing the American supply routes. However, a significant hurdle presents itself. Fernando Po is under Spanish sovereignty, making a direct military assault impractical without risking war with Spain. The solution is the formation of a clandestine unit tasked with the mission to annihilate these supply ships. This team must operate under the radar, fully cognizant of the risks involved. Capture by British forces would lead to imprisonment, while falling into Nazi hands would mean certain death. Several days later, M and Ian find themselves in a strategic discussion with Agent Heron and Agent Stewart. They learn that a decision has been reached to form a squad for the mission on Fernando Po. The challenge, however, lies in the fact that the only person qualified to assemble such a team is currently incarcerated by the King's orders. M, through some maneuver, has already secured his release from jail, following a briefing from Gus, who was selected to spearhead the team to Fernando Po. Gus, made aware of the mission's high stakes by M, agrees to take it on but under the condition that he selects his own squad. Gus's chosen team includes Henry, Freddy, Lassen, and a dear friend called Apple. A complication arises when they learn from Gus that Apple has been captured by the Nazis on a separate assignment and is now held in a fortified Nazi encampment. Determined, Gus resolves that their first move will be to rescue Apple before embarking on their primary objective on Fernando Po. M, seeing no alternative, consents to the plan. Gus is informed that in the meantime, agents Heron and Stewart will be collecting informations. Heron has been covertly positioned on Fernando Po, masquerading as a casino proprietor, while Stewart, a renowned singer and actress, has infiltrated their ranks, leveraging her connections to a Nazi general on the island. With this understanding, Gus is prepared to initiate the mission. We now pivot back to the present moment. Heron and Stewart embark on a covert operation, commandeering a Nazi train bound for Fernando Po. Their attention is drawn to a Nazi commander, particularly when he places his suitcase down. Seizing the moment, Stuart swaps it with hers. Retreating to their compartment, they uncover the contents of the commandeered suitcase, revealing crucial intelligence on the Nazi fleet's resupply schedule. Heron promptly relays this information to Agent M via his transmitter, a development that promises to pinpoint the optimal moment for their attack on the Nazi ships. Following this breakthrough, they proceed to brief Churchill on their findings, who emphatically advises them to proceed with the assault without delay. 
The scene then shifts to Gus where he gathers his team, delving into the details of their next phase. Their plan is to liberate Apple and subsequently demolish the Nazi vessels harbored at Fernando Po. The team aligning with Gus's strategy, gears up for the mission's execution. Swiftly reaching the Nazi detention center where Apple is confined, Lassen wastes no time, swiftly neutralizing two guards with his arrows. As they infiltrate the facility, the team engages in combat, overpowering the Nazi forces with their superior combat skills, utilizing an arsenal of weapons <laughs> from firearms to explosives. Their prowess ensures the swift liberation of Apple, and without delay, they set their sights on their primary objective at Fernando Po. Heron and Stuart have just arrived at Fernando Po, and without delay, Heron escorts Stuart to meet the island's Nazi general Lure. He confides in Stuart that Lure is their prime target, and insists she must form an alliance with him by any means necessary, emphasizing the strategic advantage it would offer them. Despite this, he cautions her about Lure's perilous nature and the importance of treading carefully around him. Upon meeting, Heron introduces Stuart to Lure as a prominent gold trader interested in engaging in illicit gold transactions with him. Lure shows a keen interest in Stuart but remains non-committal. After their meeting, Heron outlines his plan to Stuart. Before Gus's team's arrival, he aims to clear the harbor to ensure their discreet entry. His strategy involves hosting a lavish party at his casino for the officers, and a separate beachside celebration for the soldiers, effectively diverting everyone's attention. The challenge remains with Lure's known aversion to social gatherings, leaving Stuart with the task of persuading him to attend. During a visit to Heron's casino, Heron engages in conversation with an officer named Benea, who informs him that the shipment of submarine supplies is set to depart three days ahead of schedule, leaving Heron stunned. Meanwhile, Lure having taken an interest in Stuart, joins her and eventually concedes to the gold transaction she proposes. Seizing the opportunity, Stuart cleverly broaches the topic of Heron's impending party, urging Lure to attend as a celebration of their deal. Heron joining the conversation extends his invitation to Lure, who finally accepts the invitation to the party. Subsequently, Heron and Stuart made their way to Heron's residence, where he unveiled the transmitter to dispatch a message to M, indicating the early departure of the supply ships by three days. This necessitated Gus's crew to adjust their arrival to three days ahead of their initial plan. Upon receiving this pivotal update, Gus and his team convened to strategize their next move, and resolve to take a perilous shortcut to Fernando Po, gaining the needed three-day advantage. This route fraught with challenges and heavily monitored by Nazi forces, was deemed their sole option. Redirecting their ship, they embarked on this hazardous path. Their journey soon led them to a British destroyer, which sought to detain them, unaware of their covert operation. This predicament was short-lived as the arrival of German submarines diverted the destroyer's attention, providing Gus and his team a narrow escape window before the submarines launched their assault. Meanwhile, Heron and Stewart encountered Campbell, a formidable leader with a substantial mercenary force at his disposal. They sought Campbell's assistance, presenting their need for additional manpower and armaments to counter the overwhelming Nazi presence planned for the Operation Day. Campbell initially skeptical, was swayed by the promise of financial reward and his aversion to Nazis, ultimately consenting to lend his support. A rendezvous was arranged between Campbell, Heron, and Gus's squad, facilitating introductions and the formalization of their alliance. Gus, upon learning of Campbell's commitment to their cause, was buoyed by the prospect of bolstered forces and weaponry at their disposal. Later, Heron ventures into a Nazi-controlled power station on the island to set a bomb, aiming to disrupt the electricity as a signal for Gus and Campbell to commence their attack. However, his mission takes a sudden turn when three German soldiers confront him. In a rapid response, Heron eliminates two soldiers with gunfire before his weapon runs out of ammunition. Without hesitation, he resorts to his knife, dispatching the third soldier in close combat. Meanwhile, Stuart is seen providing Lure with a disguise for Heron's upcoming masquerade party. She escorts Lure to the celebration held at the casino, while concurrently, a separate gathering draws the majority of the German soldiers to the beach. This strategic diversion ensures the enemy's attention is elsewhere, leaving Gus and Campbell's assault on the island largely unnoticed. Suddenly a man approaches Lure at the party, revealing that the Nazis have fortified their main supply ship with an additional layer, rendering it virtually indestructible and immune to bombardment. Alarmed by this development, Stuart rushes to inform Heron, urging the need to immediately warn Gus and Campbell, who are already en route. In a race against time, Heron departs for his clandestine residence to establish communication with Gus, 
Unfortunately, the bomb detonates prematurely. Despite the setback before launching their attack, Gus and Campbell receive a signal from Heron using a light, followed by radio communication. Heron discloses the enhanced defenses of the main supply ship, emphasizing its formidable resilience. This critical update reaches M, who decisively instructs Gus to proceed with their mission under any circumstances. Suddenly, Admiral Pound arrives, a figure of significant authority in the government. Pound inquires M and Ian about their activities, only to receive a vague response due to the classified nature of their mission. Unbeknownst to them, the officer tasked with their communication was a double agent for Pound. This agent activates the transmitter, enabling Pound to eavesdrop on the conversation, infuriating him as he wishes for the mission's failure to discredit Churchill and oust him from the Prime Ministership. Pound reaches out to Gus, commanding him to sabotage the mission by any means necessary. Gus, feigning a poor connection, disconnects the call, further aggravating Pound. Afterwards, M alerts Churchill of the unfolding events. Churchill, enraged and understanding the critical importance of the mission's success to prevent a scandal and safeguard his position, emphasizes the necessity for Gus and his team's success. The narrative shifts back to Gus and his team, pondering over how to deal with a ship resistant to detonation. Apple proposes a cunning plan, commandeering the main supply ship and two smaller vessels to cut off supply lines to the submarines, ensuring mission success. The team unanimously supports Apple's plan, outlining their roles. Apple, Lassen, and Campbell, along with his men, are to seize the main ship. Henry and Gus will neutralize the soldiers on the dock and capture the boats. Freddy is tasked with planting explosives to sever the main ship's mooring and to inflict maximum damage on the Nazis' infrastructure on the island. As the plan unfolds, Apple, Campbell, and Lassen board the ship, overtaking it with ferocious determination. Lassen, in a berserk rage, decimates the ship's defenders using arrows and an axe, single-handedly overpowering many. Apple and Campbell's forces swiftly subdue the remaining crew, securing the ship. Concurrently, Freddy meticulously places his explosives, then regroups with the team, while Henry and Gus eliminate opposition on the dock, seize the boats, and successfully sever the chains binding the main ship, facilitating their escape with strategic precision. Returning to Stuart, who is currently performing a song, she manages to captivate Lure and the other officers, effectively diverting their attention from the activities unfolding outside. Her performance is a success, but inadvertently, Stuart utters a phrase uniquely associated with Jewish people. This revelation causes Lure to become enraged upon realizing she's not of German descent, prompting him to decide on her demise. Following the gathering, Lure seizes Stuart for torment, but their plans are abruptly interrupted by the detonation of explosives planted by Freddy. The blasts draw Lure's attention, compelling him to instruct his men to secure Stuart while he assesses the chaos. Meanwhile, the party's military personnel finally take notice of the turmoil, witnessing Gus's team stealing the boats and the principal ship. A fierce exchange ensues between Gus's team and the German soldiers. Amidst the chaos, Campbell's men manage to tow the main ship with the boats. To everyone's astonishment, submarines positioned for an attack on Gus spontaneously implode, courtesy of Freddy's strategic placements, ensuring a safe departure from the island for Gus and his allies. At this moment, Lure's men bring Stuart to him. As Lure confronts Stuart with threats of torture, she unexpectedly draws a concealed firearm and fatally shoots Lure. Heron then arrives in time to eliminate Lure's remaining men and facilitates their escape. They join Gus on a boat, setting course for England. Upon their approach, the British destroyer intercepts them, detaining all except for Campbell and his team, who are permitted to depart due to their non-English origin. Eventually, Gus and the others make it to England, where they are greeted by Churchill himself. Despite their expected incarceration, Churchill informs them of their mission's success, which not only secured his position as Prime Minister, but also facilitated American support in the war due to the sabotage of the submarines. Consequently, Churchill offers them positions to serve under his command instead of facing jail time. As the movie concludes, we learn of Captain Gus's subsequent ventures under Churchill's command, marking a series of distinguished missions for England. This saga purportedly inspired Ian Fleming, post his military career, to create the iconic James Bond character drawing from Gus's exploits. Fleming, transitioning from military service to literature, would go on to establish the James Bond legacy. Moreover, the story commemorates the valor of Apple, captured but undaunted by Nazi forces. Lawson, whose post-mission military career earned him highest honors for his valor, 
and Stewart, who, after her wartime contributions, resumed her acting career, achieving fame, and eventually marrying Captain Gus. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.